Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next Avatar news update video. This one is going to cover a few things. First thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the first little bits of information we're getting out of San Diego Comic Con 2015. Obviously the merchandise has gone on sale, it'll primarily be about that. Um, afterwards I'll talk a little bit about uh, Brian Kinesco who uh, revealed some more information about his book series Thread Worlds. And then the final thing I'll discuss will be uh, Mike DiMartino has announced the project that he's working on now and has been working on since the end of Korra and that is a uh, novel series called Geniuses so uh, I'll discuss all of those over the course of the video but I'll start with the Avatar stuff um, so yeah for first day of the convention people the attendees have been there the only Avatar thing that has happened is that the two exclusive pieces of mer merchandise for Avatar have gone on sale and people have been able to buy them now of course, we know what they are. We They are the uh, Zwari Industries Special Edition Shiny Lin Bei Fong PPC Model Kit. And the Avatar Generations uh, Art Print. Both of which are on, the sa uh, on sale, people have got them. But there's been a big problem. Um, and that is just with regards to the number of each of these products that Nickelodeon, whoever, have brought to the convention for sale. It, there doesn't seem to be too much of a problem with the art print, uh, by all accounts what I hear is that there's 300 on sale every day. So if they run out, there's still more on sale the next day. Then over the course of the convention, there's, there's basically around a thousand of these things. No one's really going to miss out on them. The problem is the Lin is Wire Industries figure. They brought, I think, 100 in total, um, maybe a little bit more than that, but they're only selling 20 of them a day. And for some reason, I just don't know why, apparently you, if you were in line near the front, you could buy two of these things. And there's only 20 of them available. So realistically, 10 people in the queue could have taken all of these. And apparently that's what happened on the first day they went on sale. Basically, the first 10 people or so in line bought two of them. A lot of people just put them straight up on eBay to sell them for like two or three times the price. It cost $100 at the convention and... There's a few on sale already, sold already for $300. So, big problem for people at the convention there. And um, that scalpers are obviously t uh, taking these figures that actual Avatar fans want. And it is an SDC exclusive. Of course, the, the regular lane is going to come out in a month or two. And that will be fine. But to anyone attending this convention, putting the effort in to go to this convention and line up and get one of these figures. It's awful to see someone buy two of them and put them straight up on eBay. And... Um, so, huge problems, a lot of complaints from uh, fans at the convention about this. Don't know if anything's being done about it. It seems like Zwire Industries are just happy that people want this thing and there obviously will be more on sale over the next few days. They obviously haven't sold out yet because the convention's not over, but I assume they'll all be taken up and it's going to be a real hassle for anyone to get them. Um, already, I, I, a lot of people I follow on Facebook who... Um, or at the convention have just basically said no not going to bother even trying to get this it's such a hassle um really kind of has messed up my convention but at least the art print doesn't seem too difficult to get but um definitely something needs to be done here apparently there's some like competitions on during the convention where people can win one a day but you know you have to win a competition to get one that's a problem um, no announcements just yet from Zwire Industries about anything else they're doing. I still don't know if they will announce anything over the course of the convention. But the one reveal, the one proper piece of news that we've gotten over the course of the convention is that Dark Horse have a booth, obviously, at the convention. And they have av an avatar section. They're selling all of their merchandise, whether that be the art books, uh, the comics, uh, some of the other merchandise they've released so far, the you know the magnets lunch boxes and stuff like that the ang statue that they released but also in there was an upcoming product from dark horse and we thought the line was done but apparently it's still coming out and the new thing that they announced coming out in early 2016 is going to be a Korra statue and uh, you can see the image of it here so pretty cool statue for sure Korra in a pretty nice pose. It's book one Korra, very standard pose, but it, I think it works. They're not going for anything too fancy and a pose that might kind of turn people off buying it. Um, it's just a very solid looking Korra. So um, seems to be around 11, 12 inches tall, 
similar in size to I think the Ang statue, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, no price just yet, but again, as I said, the 20, early 2016 release date. So it's just interesting that there are now two companies out there making basically uh, avatar statue figures. One obviously is more than the PVC side of things and kind of you have to assemble little bits of it. I think the lane is only like four or five parts. I think you attach the arms, you attach the head, and then you attach the overall figure to the base. So it's not crazy model kit style. Whereas this Korra is just going to be one giant piece. I think it's going to be much more expensive. Um, but still, it's pretty nice. I definitely, I'm not going to make a decision on if I want to get it or not when it does come out. Until I see what Zawire Industries are doing next. Because their stuff is probably going to be cheaper. I think overall it's going to be like a, a bit more special and stuff like that than the Dark Horse stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I, I like that Dark Horse are still doing stuff for Avatar, but um, to me all the excitement is around Zwire Industries rather than Dark Horse in this case. Um, they just, it, it all feels a little too late for Dark Horse, like they could have done this like a year or two ago, but they didn't. And now they're suddenly doing, and now there's another company on the market, and apparently they've got like eight figures planned, so, you know... They, they basically mess up themselves but uh, that's all the SCCC news from today obviously the big day for Avatar fans is tomorrow we have the Nickelodeon and Dark Horse Avatar and Korra panel where hopefully we'll get some really good news we'll get news about the future of where the franchise is going get some new comic reveal, comics revealed new information and stuff like that I hope it's packed full of news and isn't just like one or two tiny little tidbits. Either way, I'll cover what there is um, because I'm really excited. So you'll see a video on this uh, panel tomorrow. But uh, as I said, uh, the rest of the video is going to be talking about Mike and Brian's uh, projects that they're working on now while they're not working on the new Avatar series. So um, first thing I want to talk about is... Brian's uh, project. I, I talked about Threadworlds already. I talked about the reveal that they have. Um, and so let me just find the post here from Brian about uh, extra stuff he revealed. So, uh, in addition to the press release and the interview um, that came out revealing Threadworlds, uh, Brian has also posted a few more images from Threadworlds. They're, again, he says their concept art is still very early stages yet, but he's re revealed more of the background behind the premise of this book and stuff like that. So, um, first of all, I suppose we'll cover the images because they are just concept art. It's uh, the images here are of Nova, our main character, a uh, female kind of uh, rabbit, kind of kangaroo style um, character, and her sister who has a name, but Brian is kind of unsure if he wants to reveal it just now because he might change it before the book actually comes out so uh, either way it's confirmation that it's Nova and her sister so two female characters here so the first one is just this one uh, again just you know get a, we get a look at the planet that they're on and Brian mentions earlier on that uh, this species of uh, this kind of kangaroo like species is from the first of the thread world planets um, which has the same orbit around this uh, star um, and um, it's the most primitive planet it doesn't have a lot of technology on it um, but either way it, it's not, it's, it, they're very characterful designs and um, you see it's very kind of lots of nature going on it doesn't reveal a massive amount though it just gives you a, a kind of clearer look at what the character designs are Second image is roughly the same, but again, just gives you a different look. Maybe gets a little bit of the personality coming across. Uh, you can see the second image here. So in this one, it, it perhaps gives you the idea that, okay, the, the sister is going to be the more kind of uh, energetic one, really happy, whereas Nova seems a little bit more just kind of composed, I suppose. She still has this, I suppose, sense of wonder and stuff like that, but she seems... A little bit more serious than her sister, so um, either way, interesting. Again, the the nature, the landscape seem the most interesting thing right now. But again, not a lot going on here. It is still concept art. Again, the book's not out until like twenty seventeen. The first one of these things, but um, the big reveal I think here from this is just the kind of description he gives uh, to add more to this. And he says, um, 
Threadworld is set on a group of five planets that share a single orbit. The Earth-like worlds are teeming with life and each uh, has each has evolved its own unique intelligent species in, in staggered states of technological progress. The epic adventure follows a chain reaction of scientific discoveries as they ripple from planet to planet. The hero of the story is Nova, a budding young scientist from a kangaroo-like species on the most primitive, primitive of the thread worlds. Stubborn and brilliant, she, li she, lives out, she lives out of step with her superstitious, uh, oppressive empire where girls are forbidden to read and write. But nothing can quell Nova's uh, passionate uh, curiosity and awe of the universe. Her scientific pursuits sweep her up in a thrilling journey that links the fates of the five planets and unites the powers of the brightest minds in a pursuit of, uh, for truth and progress. So, straight away, it is, again, it's going for this idea that he wants to kind of empower girls to get involved in science, and we're going to see that through Nova's character. She's from the most primitive planet, but she wants to be a scientist. Girls are not allowed to kind of learn, says here to not allow them read or write, but she really wants to do that, and there's this empire on her planet that kind of won't let her do that, so that seems to be where the plot kind of kicks into gear. She maybe discovers something about the other planets and wants to go to them where she can maybe be more free. Um, and just, that, I find that interesting that, okay, science is going to be a key thing because there's going to be apparently these scientific discoveries on planets that maybe take uh, are of interest to Nova and she wants to go to them and um, what else do we have here and then just this idea that there's this kind of chain reaction that kind of goes from planet to planet that maybe as we go through the series she gradually goes from the more from the kind of her own least technological planet to the last book the last planet in the series being the most technologically advanced one and where the technology comes from. There could be some really cool stuff in this series. Um, I think this little description here, in addition to what we got before, gives us a really good, nice basis to kind of go on right now. And I'm really excited for the first one of these books to come out. I'm really excited for more information. Definitely, I maintain the big thing is just like, I question a little bit announcing it this far in advance when Yes, you're revealing a decent amount of information, but it's so far away. Who is going to remember this when it actually comes out? But again, they seem to be making a pretty big deal about this. Let's see where this goes. So, uh, next thing, the final thing that I want to discuss in this video is uh, Mike DiMartino's new project. So, uh, I'm just going to do an edit cut here so I can actually find the post and talk about it from there. Okay, so Mike DiMartino has announced that the project he's been working on since the end of Korra has been this uh, three-part um, novel series, fantasy novel series called Geniuses. And there's a, there's a few pieces of concept art going around about it. It's primarily for covers and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's more of a novel, obviously, like uh, written text rather than kind of uh, Ryan's, which is a graphic novel, so... Um, the art, I suppose, is just to give some sort of a sense for what the world is going to be like. Um, before I get into it, I suppose I'll just say that I definitely think Brian's idea is going to appeal a lot more to Avatar fans than uh, Mike's idea, purely because Brian's idea still feels kind of Avatar-like in terms of it's this big world, there's going to be a lot of world building and the characters and the themes he seems to be going for, whereas Mike seems like a pretty big departure from Avatar, like almost completely. Um, but it is Mike, we know he's primary story guy from of the team, so we assume there's it's going to be something good here. So The description that we have for this series is, um, set in a renaissance-like fantasy world, Geniuses explores the concept of art as magic where an artist's creative genius is actually a living creature, a real-life muse that inspires and protects him or her. Because the leader of this world sees uh, the genius as a great and dangerous power, anyone with a genius is captured to ensure, he, to ensure he or she doesn't become a threat to society. Many have their geniuses destroyed and subsequently become ghosts of their former selves, doomed to live a life without direction, inspiration, or original thought. Um, but a talented few are keeping their creativity and their geniuses alive at, at a secret studio where a, young art, 
where young artists like 12-year-old uh, Giacomo learn how to harness their genius's power. But before Giacomo's training is complete, he and his fellow students set off on a life-or-death quest to find the mythical creator's compass before it falls into the hands of a rogue artist who plans to use the compass to destroy the world. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's an interesting idea, I think. For me, definitely a Renaissance style, like that time period. I, I personally, it probably doesn't suit me the best, um, but I think the concept is really interesting. The idea that um, th that it's this physical represent representation of a person's genius, and it almost has this kind of metaphor, like um, kind of symbolism type thing going on as well. Just that when your genius is destroyed, like this thing that represents your genius. It is like like someone stifling someone's creativity and stuff like that, and they have to live this life without creativity. And again, like oppressive government, that seems to be the general theme of both uh, creators, um, Mike and Brian's um, stories. These these um, governments or the people in charge suppressing, in Brian's book, you know, like girls becoming interested in science, and in this case, just artistic freedom in general. Um, but yeah, just like, the, okay, so this is 12-year-old kind of group of kind of people who want to keep their geniuses alive and well, and then there's a quest going on. Um, definitely, like, I'd like more information right now about, like, what sort of powers do the geniuses have? Um, I think most of all, probably what doesn't seem that interesting to me is the art style. And Br Mike has said that it is him doing these illustrations. Um, so for me, it just... I'm just a little bit kind of like the art really I don't think is a good representation about what this series actually is like l l look at the the main image here like I think the art is fine like this is a really nice piece of art it just okay that's a guy there's this kind of hummingbird like thing that seems to be able to project symbols like what does that power mean there's, there, there's obviously the cool thing of like the just ge the geometry and stuff like that. So it seems like there's going to be some kind of um, pretty interesting um, symbolism stuff going on or just some kind of puzzle solving maybe going on here with some mysteries, Renaissance style thing, which could be very interesting. Um, but, um, you know, again, it, a, a novel series, um, maybe the fact that it is kind of this kind of middle school aimed book maybe not in this in the in the wheelhouse for a lot of avatar fans but i'm definitely going to give at least the first book a chance i think the the bonus that this one has is that um it's um the first book's coming out in 2016 fall 2016 so you know he, he, this is going to release before brian's series by a good few months um but you know i i definitely like these creators are excellent so there's no reason to really doubt that this will won't be any good, but the concept for Brian's Thread World seems so amazing. Whereas this, like, okay, it's a cool concept. Not really sure about the art, um, and definitely like just in general, I, I, I think you know the Thre Thread Worlds is going to be. I think I'm going to like Thread Worlds just based on everything I've heard. The the Renaissance kind of geniuses book. I'm kind of like maybe the, if the concept is really done very well and it's written in a certain way it could be great but i'm just happy that both of them are working on something i do hope though that at the panel tomorrow it is not just a case that mike and brian announced that look we're working on other projects we're not doing anything with avatar i really want them to still announce that they are at least assisting with core comics and stuff like that and um, because this is cool and all but I don't want this this new stuff to come at the expense of Avatar. I suppose that's the main thing I wanted to say. But yeah, that has been the video. Covered a lot of stuff here. Let me know what your thoughts are on the um, the SDCC problems with the stock on the exclusive items, spe specifically the Lin statue. And your thoughts on the reveal of the Korra statue. And then the new information about um, Mike and Brian's new project. Other than that, that's been the video. Uh, news video tomorrow covering the Dark Horse panel, the big one. 
tomorrow so definitely check out that video i'm going to go in depth on everything that is revealed if there is anything so uh, check that out tomorrow uh, thanks for watching this video and bye